Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. As part of our Foundation Online course, this is a short video to discuss the basics of using an amateur radio repeater. Repeaters are covered in Module 9 of our course, but in summary, repeaters can help to extend the range of radio signals over a wide area. They're mainly intended for use by mobile or handheld users looking to extend the range. The UK has a network of over 500 voice repeaters and there's a mix of analogue and digital repeaters. The digital formats are DMR, D-Star and C4FM Fusion. Some repeaters can also be linked to the internet to extend their range even further. So how does a repeater work? Repeaters have an input and an output frequency so that they can transmit and receive at the same time. Typically, but not always, the following is true. A 2 meter repeater, that's for frequencies between 144 and 146 MHz, typically transmits 600 kHz above the input frequency. A 70 SEMS repeater will usually transmit at 1.6 MHz or 7.6 MHz below the input frequency. On the screen here you can see a diagram of a vehicle transmitting on 145125 to a repeater. The repeater rebroadcasts that in real time on a frequency 600 kHz up 145725. We'll give you an example of this later on in this video. Repeaters use tones called CTCSS, standing for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. This is a very low frequency tone that's transmitted underneath your audio. When you transmit to a repeater, the repeater will be listening for the correct tone. The CTCSS tone does two things. Firstly, it stops signals coming into the repeater unless the radio has been correctly programmed with the right tone and also allows repeaters to share frequencies. So how does someone access a repeater? Well, you need to program your radio with the offset, for 2 meters that's 600 kilohertz, and also the correct CTCSS tone. Shown on the video now are two photos of displays of radios. The top one here you can see a minus symbol that indicates that the offset for 600 kilohertz below has been correctly set. There's also a T indicating tone. On the photo below, again, you can see the minus sign indicating that the 600 kHz shift is set. And also you can see here ENC, standing for encoding, meaning that the signal is encoded with a CTCSS signal. When using a repeater, it's common to use your call sign and location a bit more frequently. You have to be aware of various timeouts. Some repeaters have a timeout of two minutes or so, meaning that people can't waffle on for a great length of time. If you want to join a repeater, you don't call CQ like you would on the calling frequency. You would normally transmit and say this is M7QQQ listening for any calls. If there's an existing conversation taking place on a repeater, you can use the word break between overs to try and jump in and join the contact. And on repeaters you'll quite often find nets where people get together for a regular meetup. If all of that sounds a bit confusing, let's move on to an example. We're going to look at the GB3DA repeater which is located in Danbury near Chelmsford in Essex. On the screen here you can see a picture of the site. And if you look carefully, about halfway up, you can see a white vertical antenna, which is the antenna used for GB3DA. All of the repeaters in the UK are listed on the ukrepeater.net website. On the screen now, you can see the entry for GB3DA, showing the output frequency, 145725, the receive frequency, 145125, again 600 below, and also the tone of 110.9 Hz. On the screen now is a coverage map for GB3DA. Shaded in blue would indicate a good strong signal from the repeater, and the areas in purple should be able to receive the repeater, but not very clearly. 
Moving on to a practical example, I live in Southend-on-Sea. If I want to transmit further than I can reach from home, I would call into the Danbury repeater and then the Danbury repeater will automatically relay my signal further afield, therefore extending my range. Looking at this in practice, the vehicle on the left is transmitting on 145125 MHz and also transmitting the CTCSS tone of 110.9. So if we're transmitting on 145125, the receive would be 600 up. And you can see on the right here, 145725 is the frequency to receive. As we mentioned earlier, it's important to program up your radio so that it transmits the correct tone and also transmits on the correct frequency. When you press the push to talk button to transmit, you should switch to the transmit frequency. That's the frequency that the repeater is listening to. When you release the push to talk, it should go back to the receive frequency so that it can hear the response from the repeater. Let's take a look at a few screenshots of this in action. Now all radios are different, so you've got to look through the menus and the instruction manual to find the full instructions. The radio I'm using, menu option 83, lets me set the tone frequency. And the frequency for the GB3DA repeater is 110.9. Then I have to set the offset. On this particular radio, you can see here it's menu option 76, repeater shift, and it's 0.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz. Once I've set the offset and also the CTCSS, I would save that into memory to save me having to program that in each time. And you can see on the screen here, I've got the little minus symbol to indicate that the offset is correctly programmed and TEN, Tone Encode, to indicate that I'm sending out the right CTCSS. So to put this into practice, if I now transmit and put out a test call to the repeater, as I push the push to talk, the transmit frequency goes to 125. When I take my finger off, it goes to 725. This is Mike Zero, Papa Sierra X-Ray, checking access to GB3DA. Now let's do a quick demonstration of a very short QSO on a repeater. M0 PSX GX4 RSE. GX4 RSE from M0 PSX. Good evening, Dorothy. Nice to work you this evening on the club call sign. Uh, just for your information, uh, I'm recording uh, this particular part of the conversation for some trainees that are keen to learn a bit more about uh, how repeaters work. Uh, back to you there, Dorothy. GX4 RSE from M0 PSX. M0 PSX, GX4 RSE returning. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, yes, and hi to everyone who's listening on a piece uh, stream or it's been recorded for for the training purposes. Great to uh, hope you're enjoying it. And uh, yes, repeaters are really great because some of these stations I might not be able to hear very well unless we were using a repeater. Thank you very much for that, Pete. Of course, in your area, you might find there are quite a few repeaters and programming them into the radio manually can be a little bit of a faff. For that reason, it tends to be best to get a computer lead and do the programming from a computer and then upload the settings to the radio. A very common application that many of us use is something called Chirp, and you can see the screen here. In the first column, the number represents the memory preset. Second column is the receive frequency. The third column is for the name. And the fifth column here is showing the CTCSS tone. And towards the end, you can see the offset of 0.6 MHz. There are various chirp files available, so you don't have to program these all in yourself. You can get an existing chirp file, import it into chirp, and then upload it to your radio. Saves a lot of the messing about. So there we go. That was a short and sweet introduction to the basics of using repeaters on amateur radio.